Good evening. Once again, it is good to see each of you here. It's always a pleasure when we do get to get together like this again in the evenings where we can study God's Word, be led in such wonderful songs that Paul has led us in and to be led in prayer. We're thankful for these opportunities and what a blessing, privilege, and honor it is in fellowship to do such. Tonight, we've been going over here on Sunday nights some lessons from Psalms, and I was planning on going over Psalm 22, but as the afternoon went on, I started not feeling too well and kind of got a little worse and worse, and so I changed it up a little bit knowing I would do a disservice to that sermon, uh, not being able to really get through it like I need to. So tonight, we're going to be looking specifically at Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 20, wherein Paul says this, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. I want us to really think this evening for a moment on our abundant God throughout Scripture, and throughout the New Testament in particular, God demonstrates many abundant things that he has and delivers to us based on that which he has. And I want us to consider that this evening. So the first thing that I want us to look at is and consider God's abundant grace, his abundant grace. You and I know that salvation required an abundant grace, didn't it? When we think that Adam and Eve created there and placed in the garden, when we think of all the advantages they had, obviously even when they fell and God walked among them, that not being something new, that God was around them and with them and saw them that they still fell, they still sinned, that they still were deceived and caught up in sin. Eve was deceived, excuse me, Adam willfully did so. But nevertheless, Adam and Eve sinned. And from that point on, all of humanity has done just that. We needed, as mankind, we needed God's abundant grace to save us God had to show us that abundant grace through sending his son to be the perfect sacrifice, didn't he? For each and every one of our sins. In Romans 5 and verse 20, Paul would say this, Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. The reality of sin is abundant in our lives, and it abounds in humanity. Without the blood of Christ, without the grace of God, we would not have such wonderful uh, hope that we have today. Thanks be to God <clears throat> that he sent his only begotten son, who is that free gift, that grace for our sins. Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of a singular sin is spiritual death, isn't it? But God gave us that free gift, eternal life, in Christ Jesus. Because our sin required such an abundant grace, when we take hold of it, we realize that God has an abundant pardon ready for us. And don't we need it? Mankind has not done a great job over the years at trying to keep ourselves out of the need of God's compassion. The more we sin, the more we need mercy, the more we fall short of the glory of God, the more we miss that mark. Romans 3, 23, 1 John 1, 8 and 10, the more we do such, we find ourselves in need of God's abundant pardon all the more. We not only need it, to be saved, but to stay saved, don't we? I wish we could say that once we obey the gospel and have our sins washed away, Acts 22 and verse 16, that we would sin no more, but we know that's not the case. And thankfully, 1 John 1, 7, God has that abundant grace 
and allows abundant pardon through the blood of Christ, which continually washes away our sins. If we're willing to come back, repent, and confess, 1 John 1 and verse 9. In Isaiah 55 and verse 7, we read this, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon We've been saying this lately, that we are thankful as God's children that our sins can't outpace God's love. That as long as we're willing to come back to him, repent, confess those sins, he will pardon us, won't he? He has an abundant pardon. Because of God's abundant grace that we have access we have and are able to receive his abundant pardon. And he is willing to do so thankfully. That is by far a great spiritual blessing that we receive in Christ Jesus. And these two truths lead to our next abundance found in God, and that is his abundant peace. <clears throat> Mankind, from the time of sin on, has sought peace, haven't they? Man sought it in many ways, whether they be sinful or not. He sought it in money. Man has sought it in prestige. Man has sought it in material things. Man has sought it in so many different areas. He sought it in his own wisdom and so on and so forth. But it, when biblical, profound, and godly abundant peace is not found in humanity... There is a challenge of living in this earth and on this earth. Without the abundant peace of God, man struggles to even cope with the things of life. But because of those who have accessed grace and received his abundant pardon, the godly, the righteous, those who are walking in the path of uh, life, God offers them a peace that surpasses understanding, an abundant peace that is more than we can even always fathom. In Philippians 4 and verse 7, again, we remember what Paul wrote there, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, that which is surely abundant, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I know like you, I can't imagine going through this life and going through all the difficulties and the trials and tribulations that are around, the things that go on, I can't imagine going through this life without that peace from God, without having that comfort in Him. I can't imagine being one outside of Christ and not having that understanding, not having that comfort, that mercy, that peace. Thankfully, we have a God who wants us to have an abundant peace, who wants us to have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And it's that peace in this life, that in its abundant grace and pardon that we should receive from God, that leads us to our last point, and that is we find his abundant power. And thankfully, that abundant power is used many and often times to strengthen us, isn't it? The God of heaven, the God whom you and I are here to worship this evening, who we sang praises to and wonderful psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to, whose prayer we've lifted up, whose word we're studying, the God who is above all, almighty, hallowed in name, has an abundant power that he uses to help strengthen us in these days of trials and tribulations, the God who created the universe and all that is in it loves each and every one of us, doesn't he? He cares for each and every one of us. He wants us spiritually strong to get through this life and make it to the next life. This is the idea behind what Paul was praying about to the church at Colossae in Colossians chapter 1, 9 through 10, where he said this, and so... From the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will 
in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, notice bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. God's abundant power is so merciful, so gracious, so comforting, and yet so powerful that he strengthens us in our most trying times and gives us all we need during those challenging moments. There's going to be those ups and downs, but with God's abundant power, and the strength he gives each of us as we walk for him, there is an endurance and a joyful peace, isn't there? That comes from knowing we have his comfort, his spiritual guidance in this race that we're racing to the end. Because of God's abundant grace and his abundant pardon on our behalf, we have an abundance of peace that cannot be fully even grasped. And that abundance of peace comes from that abundance of power or strength that we receive from our almighty God. We started off looking at Ephesians 3 and verse 20. I want us to look now at also verse 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Our abundant God is truly abundant. He abounds in what he does for us, and we are and should be so grateful, so thankful to have his abundant grace and pardon, to have an abundant peace that surpasses all understanding, and his strength to guide us through each and every moment of this life and guide us into the next. As we reflect upon our walk with God and our examination of our lives, I pray that we look to our God who abundantly loves us, who has done everything for us to give us that hope of eternity through his Son, that we look towards our God who is everything we need, in this life to make it to the next. And so as we examine those things in our lives, I pray all is well, but if you find yourself in a situation where you're struggling, this life is challenging, this life is difficult, this life gets us down from time to time, Satan's good at what he does, isn't he? If you find yourself in that situation, allow his family here to be that strength for you, that encouragement. Allow us to put our arms around you, pray with you, encourage you, edify you, to draw you closer to us that one day when we struggle and we all will, that you'll be that strength that we need at that moment because together, looking to our abundant God, we'll help each other get to heaven. So this evening, if there's someone here who needs the church and needs his love and his care and that encouragement, let us know now as we stand and as we sing.